Mike Golick, Trey Wingo here as we continue to figure out exactly what's going on in the NBA and more importantly, Mike, maybe what is going on in college basketball. Boy, boy. So with that as a backdrop, who better to talk to than our next guest? You know him. You love him. Our basketball analyst played in the NBA, played hey at Duke, Jay I Williams. I miss you guys. Jay, how you are guys. you, buddy? I was just saying before, Trey, I really miss you guys. You know, I know I'm not in Bristol a lot. But, man, it's good to be back in the fold. Thanks for having me on the show. It is a delight yeah. to have you with us. You know, we miss you as well. We haven't had you on for so long, we decided to bring you on when Duke gave up 113 <laughs> points. Of course. You know, I'm not emotional, Mike. It's okay. You know, it's cool. It's so cool. We, we, Jay, we were joking earlier that, you know, maybe last night was a wake-up call for Duke. And then we were like, well, it wasn't North Carolina State. And if Duke was an iPhone, how many alarms would they actually have to need the wake-up calls to get themselves going? Yeah, right now you would see just the circling, the circling motion because it would say buffering because Coach <laughs> K is trying to figure out what the hell is going on. You know, it's um, – look, it, it broke my heart watching them play last night. First off, a lot of respect to Brandon Childress, guys. I've known this kid for a long time. I'm so happy to see him shine on a, on a glorious stage like that, and he's been through a lot for a week. But when you look at this Duke team – People question offensively whether they can, you know, score at high clips, right? That was the question. Trey Jones, offensively, could they score? Defensively, they're considered to be great. And now you look at their last two road losses to NC State. They gave up 96 points this game. Obviously, have 113. The, the one thing that you're going to see Coach K really focus on with this team is their effort, right? Last year, not only did you have star power with those guys, with Zion and R.J. Barrett and Cam Reddish, but they showed you effort defensively. Um, this year's team may not have the same cachet as it relates to names, but their effort is something that you don't have to, you shouldn't have to teach. It should be there each and every day. And I think as you learn how to play for Coach K as a freshman, uh, to sustain that type of effort to be great every single night defensively is a challenge, not only physically, but psychologically, because you've been so used to dominating people offensively in high school, you don't have to worry about effort defensively. And now we're seeing their youth come out on the road against a team that is at the bottom of the ACC. So going into not only conference tournaments, but but March Madness as well, Jay, if you have a team that's struggling to score or struggling on defense, which is easier to – I'm not going to say fix because it's going to be tough to fix it late, but manipulate to your benefit for the tournament. I, I would say, you know, look, defense travels, if you've ever heard that terminology before. So I would say a team that is kind of hot and cold offensively because I think you can always hit. Remember, goal, like, like, we get to the tournament, you have a lot of these teams that sometimes they get hot at the right time, and all of a sudden one guy hasn't seen the ball go in for the past 10 games, and all of a sudden he's shooting 55% from the field. We've seen it multiple times. So I'd rather have the offensive woes kind of coming into it than questioning where my team is defensively as it relates to a standard of effort that we get each and every night. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content plus live streaming, make sure to subscribe to ESPN Player.